Hello, Hashi Talks 2022. I'm Tracy Jakewith. That's my talk. This is for the robots creating GitHub and GitLab pipelines in minutes. The slides are at tracy.archive.org in case you want to follow along. Today, I'm going to show you how to easily deploy Git repositories to Nomad, set up full CI CD pipelines from scratch in just a few minutes. That's it. How we're going to do it is with GitHub and Nomad. We're going to use a 15 line YAML file and a GitHub action and one GitHub secret. I'm at Tracy Poo on Twitter. I work at the Internet Archive. I've been there for 25 years, the founding coder, and I work on TV, video, audio, DevOps, and JavaScript. Again, the slides are at tracy.archive.org. Also, we're going to be using a bunch of code from a repo at gitlab.com slash internet archive slash nomad linked below. Uh, if you don't know me, um, hello. Uh, all of my conversations, if you invite me into your house, are probably going to eventually wind up with containers. So just so you know, you'll get the Trojan horse. Today's approaches and goals are basically going to be replace Kubernetes with Nomad or possibly whatever else you're using. Use GitHub and GitLab's build phase. GitLab has a really good build phase. GitHub has some pretty good generic stuff to push to their registry and then make a custom deploy phase. So that's the, the magic here. Again, tracy.archive.org if you want to follow along. Just so you know, GitLab is even faster than GitHub to set up, um, but we're going to focus on GitHub today. You can see a link to the GitLab uh, talk back there if you like in that slide. So here's how we're going to do it. Uh, typically, a developer is going to do a commit and push. That is going to create um, a C GitHub or GitLab CI CD pipeline. That's going to go through a build phase. We'll test the build or do some tests, and then we'll do a deploy phase. How that's all going to go down is GitHub has CI CD variables. They all start with GitHub underscore. And we have some custom environment variables coming from nomad underscore var underscore. So an example would be GitHub ref name, uh, which would be your branch name, or nomad var slug, which we're going to see in a little bit, which will uh, be a nice way to identify your project and your DNS names. We're going to merge those all together into a project.template, uh, project.nomad general template, and then we'll send it off to the Nomad cluster. So if you get nothing out of today's uh, talk, uh, the too long, too long didn't read, we're going to do a GitHub action. So you're going to create one file and create one secret. In that one file, you're going to have to update your base domain and your Nomad adder. That would be to your DNS wildcard domain and then whatever your Nomad server is. And then you would just have to make this nomad token secret because you don't want that in your, your build pipelines. Uh, and that gives you access to your nomad cluster. And you're good to go. Uh, this is an example. So the only things I had to customize were uh, a base domain. So that's my wildcard domain, star.code.archive.org. I happen to be deploying to code.archive.org. And then I've got a little nomad token that I've already burned. So don't, don't try to post my stuff. Uh, yeah. So. The GitHub Actions YAML setup is a small YAML file that we're going to add to your repo. We'll, we'll go through that. You can name it anything you like, but it's got to be in GitHub slash workflows if you haven't done a GitHub workflow before. So what's going to be in that little YAML file? Well, it's going to be a little 15-liner uh, of YAML, and it's going to name the, the name of the job or the name of the overall pipeline. And then it's going to have some jobs called CI CD, and it's going to happen on every single GitHub push, uh, commit and push. It's going to run a container or set up in Ubuntu. It's got some boilerplate just so it can talk to the registry and things like that. And then it's going to run these steps. So in this case, it's going to run this Internet Archive CI CD uh, GitHub action. You can see it linked there above. If you want to see what it does, it just basically does some basic build test deploy. And here's where you customize your variables. So you customize your base domain, your nomad adder, and your nomad token would already be a secret one would come through from your secret. Uh, through GitHub. There's also a registry token secret that will come through uh, GitHub automatically as well. So again, just build, test, and deploy. Your build is going to do what you would expect. It'll do a Docker build and push to the GitHub registry. The test will, uh, just a basic test, if test.sha exists in the top of your repo, it'll run it. If you want to customize that, you can. Just try to, try to do a basic thing. And then the deploy runs ultimately this deploy.sha script, which we're going to uh, see a little bit of the overview of it. 
So that script runs inside a container with the Nomad binary already built in. So it's easier to talk to the Nomad cluster once you have the credentials. It's going to take your CI CD variables and your secrets. It's going to make some shell environment variables and uh, on the side, and it's also going to make a file called env.env. .env. It's a very creative name. It's going to take those two things and then it's going to take this overall project.nomad, which is this HCL format, and it's all templates and sort of there's holes and all those variables are going to fill in the holes and combine them together to ultimately make a project.hcl file. The deploy.show, once it's done the environment wrangling and, and setting up, it's going to run ultimately nomad validate, nomad plan, and nomad run. So it will sort of check your syntax, then it will try to schedule it and see if it would schedule it. And then if good to go, it will go ahead and run it and send it off to nomad. Uh, and all that happens in deploy.show. So if you want to see more about the generic template, it's linked here. It's project.nomad in that uh, internet archive slash nomad uh, git lab repo. It uses these template variables. So again, here's some examples. It will take the GitHub ref name, which is your branch name. It'll translate that to another uh, name that just works out with our template. Uh, GitHub re re rep I to do anything like customize. Um, maybe you wanted to say how much memory you expect or CPU. There's lots of things that you can customize as well. Uh, and again, it leverages HTL version two, which is wonderful. So you can do things like iterate over a port hash map and, and sort of automatically set those into the expectations for your job spec. So it's very, very convenient. So if you haven't seen a Nomad job spec before, um, there's a link here to this minimal project. We're gonna step through the, the smallest minimal project you could do with GitLab or uh, effectively GitHub, GitHub or effectively GitLab. So, we're gonna just call the, the job and the group hello world. So they are static here, but that just keeps it simple. The port HTTP says you, you expect you're gonna be running a web server on port 5000 and anywhere else you see the word HTTP below, it will mean 5000. So you don't have to say 5000 every time in case you wanna change it. So then we set up a task, a really basic task. We say we wanna use the Docker driver. So we're gonna be pulling a Docker image and running it. And we expect to be using the HTTP port and making a little web service. Then we set up a little service uh, description. This talks to console or console uses that as well as our router to figure out the DNS name. I think I can show you this. So that's where um, your wildcard domain is. That's your HTTPS port. And then there's some other uh, pieces that go in there that basically tells the router there's a service on this port. And if the name comes in, send the traffic on. And again, it's using the HTTP port. Console also will use some of this to um, know to do health checks. So here's our health check for console. This says check the HTTP port over HTTP. And we expect the slash page should give a 200 response um, and check every 10 seconds. And you get about two seconds to, to, to miss, two seconds to answer. And after some period of time, it can back off and things like that. OK, so if you happen to have a Nomad cluster, congratulations, you should. Uh, I hope you do. And if you happen to have one and you know your Nomad adder or Nomad token, you could just set that in a in a terminal and you could wget that hello world uh, simple thing and do a nomad run. Uh, so I talked about norm, nomad var slug before. So we want to use your GitHub or GitLab uh, user or account name, depending on which one you're using, uh, and then the repository name to make nice little host names. So these come from GitHub. And in this case, I'm using like the inner archive uh, account. In this case, the project name is Time Machine. If that branch was main or master, you won't have the branch name. But if, it, if it's another branch, like a feature branch or something, we'll actually have the feature branch in there too. So you get uh, one deployment, These they call them typically review apps, per uh, branch, and you get one unique host name. So that's why we're using a wildcard. We won't know the, brand, the host names uh, in advance. We use those same uh, nice little host names as well for the nomad job names. So the same kind of slug. So in this case, uh, Internet Archive Group has one repo called dub dub dub, and it looks like it's got two deployments, one feature branch and one main master branch, and they're all running and happy, so yay. And that's the, the job name right there using that same slug. Okay, demo time, everybody loves demos. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new GitHub repo from scratch. We're gonna deploy the repo. 
We're just going to do it in a few minutes. So we're going to do that with a 20 lines, three files set up to do a basic, really basic web server. So the web server is going to be, um, happens to be in Node.js. It's going to be listening on port 5000. And for every request that comes in, it's going to answer the time. That's it. Really a useful and useless kind of website. Then we have a Docker file that, that sort of assembles the pieces that you need. So it's going to start from the node uh, fast image Alpine. It's going to copy our files in, in this case, clock.js. And then when the container starts up, it says to go ahead and run app clock.js. And then we just need our little CI CD boilerplate. So it's our 15 lines. The only things we're going to see is we might have to change those, or someone would have to change those if they're not using uh, my server. So here we go. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the Internet Archive, type, type, type. And I'm going to make a new repository. And in this case, I'm going to call it uh, HashiConf, HashiTalks Demo. Great, it's free. And we can skip through the rest, add a readme, we'll make a blank repo otherwise, create the repo. OK, great. So now we just need three files. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that JavaScript. and. I'm going to head on over to the tab, move, move, move. And I'm going to make a new file. You can do it all from the GUI, which is really nice. So you can just hit the little, little dot, dot, dots, create a new file. We're going to make clock.js, copy the contents in, and then just go ahead and commit the file. We're going to do the same thing for our Docker file. So we're going to make um, our second file, and then we're just going to copy those contents in. And that will tell us how to do the build when we get to the build step. Docker file, type, 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 put the contents in. Again, that's just a simple node app, a little basic web server, and we're going to commit the new file. So now we're going to make the secret before we do the CI CD. So that way we have a nice clean pipeline. So I go to the little dot, dot, dots and go to the repo settings. It's a little further down in the security secrets. And then the actions, we're going to go ahead and add a new secret. There's no secrets yet. So we just say new repository secret. And we're going to type uh, title this one nomad underscore token. That gives us authentication to our nomad server. And then some scary value that no one should, uh, actually, it's already dead. But that's the, the value. So that's the credentials between the nomad adder and the nomad token to talk to the nomad cluster that I have set up for this. So now I just have to create that last little file. And it's kind of nice. You can just start hitting slashes and type it in. So github.github .github slash workflows CI CD YAML. We're going to go back to the tab and copy paste, magic copy paste in my demo. And sorry, it's a little blurry again. And then paste it on in. And so again, if you, you're probably not using my server, please don't, I guess. Uh, so you'll have your own. DNS wildcard, and you'll have your own nomad address and your own nomad token to push to. So you just update those two lines. The nomad token is coming from your secret, as is the registry token. So you're, you're good to go there. So you just have to change two things there. Then you should have an actions tab, and you should be able to scroll down, and you'll see CI CD. So there's our CI CD that's um, kicked off. This is all pretty much real time. So we're going to go look at the job and see what it's doing. Uh, it's going to pull down two different uh, repositories earlier, two Docker images. So there's a Dino thing that I'm using for testing JavaScript. And then there's this Internet Archive Nomad Master, which has the deploy.sh script and some uh, does the variable uh, setup. So now GitLab, uh, GitHub excuse me, is firing off and it's going to start the build. Uh, the build will go pretty quick because it just has to copy a few files in from the base. There it is right there, uh, copy dot slash app. And now it's already exporting the image to GitHub registry. This is a public repo. So using the GitHub registry is, is effectively free. So that's nice to use. And then we can scroll down here, and we should start seeing it uh, interacting with the Nomad portion. We skipped the test SHA because I didn't add a test SHA in this little demo. So let's see, where is the, there we go. So I see Nomad job run right there. And then I see um, that's our slug, Internet Archive dash hashy talks demo, because that's our repo name and account. There's the planning step. There's the dry run step. And now there's the run step. So it's running the project HCL. And then it gives us URL at the end. It tells us, here's what I deployed to you. So let's see if it works. Let's click a tab. Hey, it works. 
And what happens if I reload? It works too. So happy Valentine's Day. If you're into that sort of thing, that's when I made that made that little demo. And that is great. So, yeah, I guess I'm just, yeah, I'm just effectively showing you how easy it is to, to get things done. Okay, so if you want to see that, um, that was nice. That only took about four and a half minutes real time. So that's pretty excellent for a little high world server. If you want to see that, you can go to that HashiTalks demo thing and play with it, fork it, whatever you like. Uh, just as an overview of HashiStack or, or, or um, how Hashi tools get used in our, our setup, usually you're having a browser, someone's talking HTTPS to some web app, they're going to talk to a load balancer, and they'll probably downgrade to HTTP. That web app might be running, say, a database or a Redis or something like that, has a little web front end. It depends on your, your flavor, but that's kind of typical. So in the adding in the GitHub and Hashi stack kind of world, you're going to be doing a CI CD pipeline when you commit to your repo um, or maybe some administrative action that will talk to your Docker daemon or your Docker, uh, sorry, your Nomad daemon or your Nomad service, which will eventually talk to your Docker daemon, which will then potentially talk to your load balancer and go ahead and set up your uh, running web app. Uh, in addition, there is a console daemon that's running on the side that is being aware of everything that's going on. So it is feeding host names into your load balancer. In our case, we're using Fabio or Caddy. And it's also doing the health check. So it's actually talking uh, directly to your web apps, um, not even through the web uh, load balancer, which is kind of nice. So that's kind of a little overview. If you want to see more about the Project Nomad and all the different things you can um, fill in or details, you can see it right here. As an example, you can um, change the count. Like let's say that the count, the default uh, number of running things is one, but let's say you wanted it to be three or four or whatever, you could just change this to four and you can add this right into your CI CD uh, YAML file and, and that's it. You could uh, indicate how much CPU or RAM you might wanna use or, or other kinds of things or come up with custom host names as well. So uh, for monitoring and usage, uh, we you can use all the Nomad command line tools. They're great. But we actually made some aliases that a lot of our devs use. Uh, so you can use your current working directory and get use the git info. So if you're just cd'd into um, that in the terminal, you can just type nom-ssh, and it will SSH you right into the relevant container. You can copy files in. And some of us are using VS Code with a hot copy on save, which is really nice. Uh, there's nom app, which will open the, the web app girl right up in your browser so you don't have to look it up. And there's nom status for detailed deploy info, if you like. And there's one more thing. I believe I have time for this. So what if you don't have a Nomad cluster? Well, I'm doing a side project right now, and I'm calling it Hind. It's uh, in honor of Kind, Kubernetes and Docker. So if Kubernetes has Kubernetes and Docker, why can't we have HashiStack and Docker? That's the theory. So basically, you can set up a Nomad stack with everything you need, load balancer, uh, Nomad and console, inside a single Docker container. When you're done, get rid of the container. Really simple. It's linked above. Uh, it should be really fun. All you need is a, no, or, or sorry, it will give you a Nomad adder and a Nomad token once that deploy, uh, once the run is, is done, and then you're good to go. It uses Nomad, which we've talked about for scheduling, console for networking, and more. And it uses the Caddy router because it's got HTTPS automatically and lets encrypt. So every time a new host name comes in, it's already asserting it and it's pretty much ready to go by the time you want to talk to it. Uh, we use console template, which is awesome. That's the glue between console and caddy. Just found out about that. And all you need is a VM with Docker and um, a wildcard DNS search pointing to that VM, ideally, and you run this. And in fact, let's just see if I can open this. Oops. I guess it's, I'm still in oh, full screen. Okay, there we go. So you can sort of see, I don't know if this is going to be a little too small. Let me try to raise that. So here it is off and running. It's bootstrapping your hind cluster, giving you a, a good Nomad um, ACL token, a Nomad uh, token, and a Nomad adder. It goes ahead and bootstraps itself. It gives you those credentials. You can copy them. And then within a few seconds, you can type Nomad status. And there's no running job. So basically, it's it's uh, it's up and going. So let me go back. Oh, it's tricky. Oh, boy. Hold on a second. Let's 
Sorry about this. I think I opened too many tabs is what happened there. Oops. One second, please. I will whip back through this archive.org. Sorry about that. Seems I've lost all of the controls. All right, zoom, 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 zoom. Zip, zip, zip. Okay. Da, da, da. It's hind. We're almost done, so that's good. Okay, so um, if you happen to be using uh, a big repo or a monolith, which we do at the archive for one of our big ones, uh, I highly recommend you use self-hosted runners for either GitLab or GitHub. And I highly recommend you use Docker Sock. That's just something that took me a while to figure out. It's really helpful. There's a link below that will um, explain some of the ways you can set up so you can cache your Git clones and checkouts and you can cache other kinds of things. It's really, really helpful. Okay, so the results, the archive is moving to Nomad. And where are we? So we've got over hundred repos and web apps that have been deployed. 600 review apps or branches or more have been deployed. We're getting about twice the speed um, for our deploys in general, whoops. And uh, most of our devs are now using GitLab or GitHub with Nomad and the archive.org homepage and more of our services and admin stuff are using the Nomad cluster, our production Nomad cluster. And my team is actually working on most of the main pages for archive.org as well to use the Nomad cluster, which is great. So if you wanna get started, um, here's some nice demo repositories. So you can do hello Nginx uh, if you just want the bare minimum and fork that or whatever. Hello JS, which is a custom uh, pipeline if you like, and then Hind test, which is a custom pipeline and uses Hind. We have our scripts for making a multi-node cluster or for the single node Hind, and they're open source if you'd like. I'm going to try to wrap this up. And um, again, just to wrap up, we did 15 line CICD YAML file. We did one GitHub secret. And that's all we, we had to do. We were up in, in minutes. Thanks for everything. This is not my cat. Um, I also want to thank HashiCorp, GitHub, and GitLab for all that you do with the open source tools and software we use. We use it every day, and we couldn't do it without you. And um, I am sorry for that little mess up there, but congrats um, and enjoy Hashi Conf or Hashi Talks 2022.